Afternoon, everyone. How are you doing today? So I have been doing a lot of thinking about the Silicon Valley and New York City. Uh, the Silicon Valley, obviously, it's because where I've been the last 50 years or so. Uh, you know, tech haven, entrepreneurs, new technology. Then you think New York, you know, the high priced jobs on Wall Street, hedge funds, private equity, all of that. And I'm pretty convinced that Silicon Valley and New York City could suffer greatly at the hands of work from home. So what I thought I would do is walk you through three steps of my logic. Um, first, just to share with you what I'm thinking, but also because I want your feedback. Uh, this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. Um, I share with you my thoughts as they come to me. Uh, so I'd love to hear what you think. So first and foremost, what makes New York City and Silicon Valley attractive, right? If you if you think about it non-judgmentally, it, it, is, it is often thought of as the land of riches, right? If you're an engineer, computer scientist, you want to go to the Silicon Valley because you want to invent the next great thing, app, technology, whatever it is. It's been that way since Fairchild, Intel, HP, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, right? New York, Kind of the same thing, except money, financing, investing, right? If you were interested in that, you wanted to make your name in New York City. So when you step back and you look at the Silicon Valley and New York City today, what do you have? Well, you have cities that are unaffordable except for the uber rich, right? The 1%, the classic 1%. You have a quality of life that is not great for most people, right? Given where home prices and rents are, you're often asked to double, triple, or even quadruple up. You're house hacking, you're living in garages. It is expensive to go out to eat because the lease of the restaurant is expensive. It's just, it's the quality of life it's expensive, right? It's not great. The other thing that is obvious is that the middle class has been leaving New York and the Silicon Valley because it's hard to be a teacher. It's hard to be a police officer. It's hard to be a fireman, right? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, right? To think that you could make 60, 70, 80, even $100,000 and not be able uh, to afford this is rough, uh, so you're seeing the middle class leave because they can do their jobs, make less money, but be happier. And then finally, um, you have to admit, again, we attract the college graduate, the, the master's degree, PhD, who want to strike it rich, right? They're willing to live on ramen noodles. They're willing to have 10 people in a house in code 24 hours straight or do some arcane, um, you know, financial algorithm, right? They're willing to, to live that way, right? That's, it's been attractive. So what has just happened? We have seen a fundamental shift, right? And like the Great Depression, I think this crisis is going to have a fundamental shift in some consumer or individual behavior. And I unfortunately think the Silicon Valley and New York City are going to suffer the most. First and foremost, for existing employees, right, you're already at the firm, you're already making six figures, your employer is telling you, you can work from anywhere, or you can work for anywhere we have an office. And New York and California are some of the highest taxed states. So you are telling employees who are in their, I don't know, 30s and 40s, have a family, that, you know what, they can, if they choose to move to a lower cost, lower cost of living place. For many of these individuals, they're probably still renters. When you have a $3.2 million average price for a house in Palo Alto, most people aren't owners, right? They're slogging in in a 1950s house renting for eight grand a month or whatever it is. 
They're seriously talking over dinner, honey, do you want to go to Nevada? Do you want to go to Texas? Shoot, do you want to go to Florida? We can still work for company X. You know, our wages will take a little hit, but we'll save 13.3% in income tax. And oh, by the way, I'll buy you that house. We can stop being renters in a high rise in San Francisco where we can't walk on the street because there's needles in human waste. The exodus from Silicon Valley in New York is happening, happening fast, and I think accelerates. The other thing that is very obvious with what has happened in New York and California is our governors are going to have to raise taxes. The other thing in this culture that we have today, they are going to tax the rich. They're going to eat the rich. They're going to go after that. San Francisco is already talking about a millionaire's tax going after big companies. These governors don't seem to realize that they're just going to tell companies to leave and take their employees with them. So not only do you have individuals who have been renters that can become owners, they can increase their net income, but they keep their jobs. And most importantly, they're going to have a better quality of life. And lastly, what we have learned in this crisis is if you are stuck in a high rise, space is good. People are talking about it. They're going, I don't need to rent a shoebox for four or six or eight grand. I don't need to send my kids to private school for $25,000 a year. Let's go to the best school district in Texas. Let's go to the best school district in Nevada. And honey, let's become owners. So this is what I think is going to happen and why I think New York City and the Silicon Valley are in for years of pain. First and foremost, we are going to have a certain percentage of people that are employed, paying ridiculous taxes and renting, leave. I don't know what that percentage is, but they are going to leave. It could be five, it could be 10, it could be 20%. The quality of life, high taxes, renting, people are going to leave and leave in droves. Second, they're gonna do it for financial and quality of life reasons. Their taxes will go down. Their kids will have a back and front yard. They'll save on private school. They'll be able to enjoy maybe a second home. Can you imagine getting a primary home and then a second home for less than rent in San Francisco or New York City? It is going to happen. Here's the real killer for Silicon Valley in New York. Not only are we going to lose a certain percentage of the people that are here, we are already saying if you're a new college graduate, PhD, you know, whatever, don't come here. Stay where you are. We will hire you remotely. We're turning off that engine of serendipity of people just working their butts off 100-hour weeks in the garage with five of their buddies. We're saying no. Stay where you are. So if we're losing... 10% and we've turned off the folks that are the new new folks coming in I think there's a lot of pain ahead for New York City and the Silicon Valley first the good news rents are going to go down and they've already started rents are going to go down double digits it's going to be cheaper and probably a lot cheaper to rent here Second, home values will fall. It is not happening now, and it probably won't happen this year. Because at this point, there is such low supply, and demand and interest rates are still high. I can say this because my next-door neighbor sold their condo in less than 24 hours for over-asking cash. Wacky. But it will happen. We're going to have people leave, and we're going to stop the flow of people coming in supply and demand. Right now, demand supply is just so low, 
it's looking more healthy or artificial than it is. And then the real kicker, our governors are going to have to raise taxes. They're going to make it very painful for companies and the rich. There was a single individual who left New Jersey for Florida about six years ago. And his tax base, his personal, personal tax base in New Jersey, that one person leaving caused the New Jersey budget to have to be redone. One person. It happened to be a very rich Wall Street guy, obviously. But think about what they're doing in California. What if Elon Musk changed his primary residence from somewhere in LA or SoCal to Texas? What if that happened to the top, what if that happened to 50% of the top 2,000 taxpayers in California? They're like, dude, I had enough. I'm tired of all these politicians attacking me because I'm successful. I'm going to go two hours east to Nevada. I'm going to go to Texas. I'm going to go to Florida. Texas in New York, or I'm sorry, Silicon Valley in New York City, years of pain. Both are going to be very different in two to five years. On one side, rents will be a lot cheaper, but I'm afraid the opportunity that made both New York City and the Silicon Valley great will be gone. So that's how I see it. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, again, this will be, I think the exodus is fast. We're seeing it already. But I think the real nail in the coffin is we're not feeding the young 20-year-olds back into the Silicon Valley that are having five or six or 10 of their buddies live in a single house or an apartment. That next generation of entrepreneurs or finance professionals, I think that is going to be the nail in the coffin and that will be felt for years to come. So let me know what you think. I don't have a rosy picture. But yeah, this remote work, this high taxes, quality of life, why be a renter here when you could be an owner somewhere else? All right, take care.